battle of what's worse. Dominus in partes trace. Hello and uh, welcome to Beyond the Book, uh, episode one, Battle of What's Worse. Our first guest, uh, he is the head of the LD Green Co-op. You can uh, find his work all around the area, including Today's project, we're talking about the Battle of What's Worse. Please welcome L.D. Green! Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for being here. Okay, Mr. Green, it says here you are the founder of the LD Green Co-op. Now, well, why don't you tell us a little bit about that for the LD... those who don't know. The LD Green Artist Co-op yes, uh, is no. a group of artists from the valley and out of the valley, basically, that are interested in making art of any media from statue building, hence we built um, the Statue of Liberty in Manhattan, just off the coast. We've had other artists... Um, Working in France, the Eiffel Tower. Um, no, wait, that wasn't us. <laughs> We're just a group of local artists who have relatively small funds, but we try to create our dreams. Greatness from small beginnings, uh, sounds Greatness like. Greatness from small beginnings. Trying to get our dreams seen. If you have a dream, something you'd like to be filmed or captured or written about or painted, call us and we'll have the right people help take your, your production from start to finish. What if there's something strange in the neighborhood? Who am I going to call? You're going to call LD Green Artist Co-op and Production Company. All right. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. So, one of the projects that you've recently churned out is uh, this little book called Battle for What's Worse. What was the inspiration for this project? The inspiration for Battle of What's Worse lied in an unfinished book. Though the story Love Wayne, a medieval thriller, was conclusive to many people, many people who read it, I just felt that there was too much of a red bow attached to it. Everything lined up too, too beautiful. Right. So hence, Battle of What's Worse picked up 10 years after Love Wayne, a medieval thriller. So are you a little bit of a bookworm yourself? Sadly, I, I do not read a lot, Terrence. Um, it, it both helps and hurts my creative process. Um, I wrote a book, uh, a story recently called Last Page First, where the character starts off at age um, 64 and works backwards all the way back into the moment of conception. Oh. And when I was all done with it and I was explaining the, the story idea about making it into a film, one of the... Producers said that they made a film recently about that. But um, the Curious Case of Benjamin Button? Is yes. Is that the one you're thinking of? Yes. Ah. So that hurt me. <laughs> I was like, oh my lord, what a great idea. But it was already done. So that's a case where it hurt me. But helpfulness, I mean helping by not reading, is just thinking that every thought you say is magical and workable to put into a creative process. So what do you mean by workable? Well, y you think of an idea or a sentence like last page first, for instance. Mm -hmm. Oh, to me, I've never read that, that sentence. So there's many avenues I, c I can go with that. I wrote the book where you actually opened the last page first, and the story was written from back to front. Wow. So the, the workable issues of, of 
not having a good understanding of, of book reading, mm -hmm. it, it's helpful in many ways. Huh? Yeah, I find that there might be some truth in that because I'm a little bit of an artisan writer myself. Uh, and uh, when I write, I just like to just lay it all down, just let my mind go crazy. If, uh, if I want a robot cowboy riding a dinosaur, I'm going to write a robot cowboy riding a dinosaur. <laughs> and wild and crazy, that's where you start and you can kind of reel yourself in when, when need be. Or you could let more line out and, and add another robot con cowboy. And I like your processes. Huh? Thank you. Yes, and speaking of processes, uh, I, I've actually read the book and uh, one of the things that I noticed that uh, there are some creative liberties, as you called it, with the uh, grammar and punctuation. And I've noticed uh, on the back here, not sure if we can get zoomed in on this, uh, it's spelled copyright as R-I-T-E instead of R-I-G-H-T. Was that intentional? Truthfully, and I'm going to lie to you here, <laughs> printing is expensive. One less letter could help go a long way wow. if you shave a lot of letters. So, was this a rite of passage for you in any sort of way? I mean, did this feel like a big step for you? Um, completion always is a big step. Um, ask any chef when they're cooking, you know, the ingredients are coming, they're coming, they're pinches of this, pinches of that. But there's nothing better and more rewarding than sitting down and feasting. So, yes, this, this is a... a, a culmination of all the ingredients at work and me right now feasting. Oh, well, I know we had some pizza earlier, so that was a great feast. That was a great feast. Oh, my dad, he loves to cook and he always ends up cooking more than we need and we always end up feasting. So that's always a great time. One last question here. So I want to know that I mean, you're obviously very ambitious, hence the kingly outfit right here. So, what I want to know is, like, like, how do you keep your priorities in order? Like, how do you uh, put your all into these creative projects uh, while keeping uh, your responsibilities to your family and your friends? That was a question I was afraid you would ask. <laughs> Truthfully, and I won't lie this time, this story was been started in the year one, 2001. Uh, Love Wayne was written in the year zero, a year previous to this one, and just set aside due to family obligations. Mm -hmm. I have a beautiful family, um, four kids, two girls, two boys. Uh, cancer survivor. Wow. Uh, stage four, absolutely. So that took many years off of the the writing and, you know, prior. So I like to think that I did the right things during those years by putting my muse down, locking her up, and moving on to um, help pay the bills, help get my son back and forth to Boston, um, help educate the other children, help my lovely wife Stephanie with, you know, getting some of her goals accomplished. So the last couple of years, it's been, well, truthfully, you know, a time to, to let the muse loose. Um, we got tornadoed. And I told all the kids to grab an item or two and get out to the car. We're going to Grandma's. And um, oddly enough, I grabbed one thing. It was my briefcase of short stories. Wow. And when Stephanie saw that I had picked this out of everything, she, she felt then later when we were being reflective about the storm and, and, and how close they were to death, they were in the house when that tornado blew apart. It's time. The kid's health is in check. Um, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. Uh, well, I can tell you this. Uh, 
you are certainly nothing like the king that you depict in your book. <laughs> uh, yeah. King Holy Fine. Uh, yeah. Correct. And you uh, and you have uh, a lot more f moral fortitude than I think uh, a lot of people, including myself, could say. Yeah. Much appreciated. Uh, thank you. Uh, okay, one last thing. Spider-Man. Great superhero or the greatest? The greatest and the sexiest of all the heroes. Okay, uh, we'll talk more after the show. Uh, you got it. Okay, LD Green here. For, we'll be right back. Murdered. Child. Horrifically strewn in a deep leaf pile. The scent of his stench does mean his stay here has been a while. Our next guest, uh, he is the illustrator for Bell of What's Worse. Please welcome uh, Zach Resendiz. <laughs> Zach Resendiz, welcome to the show. Hi. Nice to be here. Yeah, nice to have nice to you here. You. Uh, yes, uh, looks like you've been toiling in the field a little bit. A little bit, been working pretty hard. You know, he's got me back breaking over there. <laughs> no, uh, it got a little roughed up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Maybe I'm back. I have the arsenic. Okay. Yes. Yes. Arsen I mean. Uh, yes. Arsenic. I meant apples. We yeah, have yeah. Apples. delicious we apples. We have apples for you. Uh, With nice. arsenic. Yummy. Yes, uh, <laughs> so first off, uh, you must have... Uh, Every, every single comic book person's uh, fantasy job. Like, how did you manage to pull this off? Um, I, well, I guess it all goes back to, uh, how do I answer this? Good question right off the bat. Basically, it's been a whole lot of time in the making. Um, just ever since I was five, I was just drawing, drawing, drawing. And then, um all the way up through high school I was drawing and then you know I put it down a bit went to college graphic arts uh, graduated from that uh, nothing really came of that and I ended up going to the Joe Kubert school in 2010 what's the Joe Kubert school could or uh, Kubert I uh, should say. it's basically like the Harvard of comic book schools Whoa. like uh, like every single big time person that you could think of is in there uh, you know, like I took narrative art from Adam Kubert and, uh, you know, Fernando Ruiz, he's in there too. He was my drawing teacher. Uh, Mike Chen, he's, he's, I still talk to him a lot. He, he gave me a lot of advice. Um, he, it's, it's, it was just a blessing because I got to see people and meet people from like Rome and uh, it, all over the world. All over the world. And there was only 99 people in the school. So it was all very tight knit. Unfortunately, wow. I had to leave a little early uh, due to financial situations, but um, my wife was pregnant with our son at the time. So we came back home and, uh, you know, the family came first, you know, and so, uh, yeah, yeah, much like him, you know, uh, things had to be put aside a little bit. Uh, money came first. But um, after a while that, like he said, the muse was coming back. And it was an itch I couldn't scratch. And I wow. just, yeah, it was just driving me crazy. So I had to start, you know, from the beginning all over again. And um, one day I just said, I have to do this. You know, I said, I, I got to do this. I just have to do it. And so I focused on it and I set my mind to the task. And um, I ended up landing a gig, uh, signing some comic books up in Salem uh, mm -hmm. at Silver Moon's Comics. Those guys are awesome. Uh, and ironically, I went to the printing store, and one of the print printers was off. And so I missed the deadline to actually get things printed. So it was the, the day before I was supposed to go in. Uh, finally, you know, it was all like kind of like a mix-up. 
um, you know, those guys are great over at the copy store. It's just, you know, printing stuff happens, you know. So I show up there and I'm getting these prints and then somebody comes walking over to me. And Hello. He's like, yeah. And he's like, oh, that's really cool. He's like, I really like that. I'm working on a book. Here, why don't we go ahead and, you know, why don't you check it out, see what you think. And I loved it. You know, I, I loved it. And uh, I just wanted to get on it, you know, and um, it, it just took off from there. So that was a long answer for, I don't know how long you were hoping for the answer, but I, you know, it, we, we talked, uh, we met up over some drinks, and, you know, it, we just really tried to communicate, and I, I, I'm, it, it worked out really well. So he gave me some freedom, uh, you know, and I, I would go back and, you know, check with him every once in a while. And I'd say, okay, well, this is what I'm seeing. Because some things, there's a lot of emotions in the book. Um, I, there's some things you just can't draw. Yes, you could draw faces, you could draw things like that. But you can't really catch, you know, what's inside their minds. Like, there's this one part where the character literally takes, uh, my character, actually, takes the, the mud, like, he lathers himself up. And there's, like, a mix of blood and stuff like that, you know, and, and it was, like, a reflection of what he was going through. Like, he was preparing himself for war, you know what I mean? But I couldn't get that, uh, that sense, like, what's going on in his mind. So I literally went, you know, I, I showed him the pictures, and I said, I'm just going to put mud on his face. And, you know, and when he asked me why, I said, because the words, I can't put, you know, the words into the picture. I can show what he's doing and probably the intent behind it, but that's where he steps in, you know what I mean? So it's, it was a visual collaboration with this really awesome rockin' story, you know, and it was actually the first time I actually dealt with uh, a writer that went this route, you know, and uh, it, it's, a, it's a big risk. It's a big risk, but it pays off huge. At least that's yes, what the, it, it's... The, the line there is, I put blood and mud... Yep. on my face and anywhere else I could touch. To mix amongst the Kingsmen, it really doesn't take too much. Mm -hmm. Wait, why you don't mean like that? Is that referring to like how easily you fought just uh, making the wrong decision or like taking the wrong turn in life could really push you to the dark side uh, quote unquote uh, illustratively I think he, he he matched those lines with the mud mm -hmm. with the expression of how he put the mud on he's mixing amongst the kingsmen so he can get that face to face visit with the king he has to bring out his dark side because this is the king of what's worse, he has to match to be the hero, to bring down a king who can't differentiate real from insane. He's gone, he's in the dark side, he has to cross over to repel this villain. Mm -hmm. So emotionally wise, wow. A picture says 10 million words. 10 million. 10 million words. Thank you. And I'm very, very proud of Zach. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it uh, sounds like it, you are. I mean, not many people uh, like have, like, I've been wanting to get my own comic book project out there, but I haven't had the guts yet to say, just go for it. D Dude, just do it. Just go for it. Like, like you, you need an Nike. illustrator? Yeah. There yeah. you go. I mean, honestly, I mean, <laughs> just toss me the book. I mean, but the thing is, is like, you gotta just lay it out sometimes. You know, because really yeah. nobody is going to sit. No, nobody put a gun to my head and, and it had me at 2 o'clock in the morning drawing. The, yeah, except the, yes, a scepter. <laughs> right, you know, I had to take care of that anyways. I mean, come on. You know, right. but um, nobody put a scepter to my head, at least, you know, that night. Uh, at 2 o'clock in the morning, sitting down, knowing that my son was going to wake up at 6, and then I had to, you know, take care of him while my wife went to work. 
Um, so it, it's it, it's dedication, you know, but you have to put it out there. And, you know, nobody, nobody is going to tell you to do it. I mean, people can encourage you, but in the end, you're the person that does it, you know. So if somebody says, I don't know if you should or whatever, just do it. It's better to swing for the fences and miss than not to swing at all. Yeah. Yeah, shoot for the stars and reach the moon as a yep. postman. Aim for the moon, but if you miss, you're in amongst the stars. <laughs> yeah, now you, you got the right start. It's in your brain. You, you would like to do this creative process. You, you want to do it. That's where, you know, the co-op is, is handy, too. You want to go for a cup of coffee and just brainstorm your idea and help bring it to light. Have some writers, have some editors there with you. Have an illustrator sketching what you're talking mm -hmm. about. It just expands your whole, your, your little idea can turn into a magnificent comic, mm -hmm. into a magnificent feature-length film. Yep. It's, you've got the start. You know you want to do it. Yep. That's the hard part with people. Yeah, to flicking that switch. I really want to pursue creative projects, uh, but I also know that I have uh, student loans that I need to pay off. So, like, what kind of uh, advice do you have for anyone who's struggling with that? Um, well, no matter what, I mean, you're going to be dealing with student loans. You're going to be dealing with it, and you know, you're going to have to make ends meet. You know, and this, unfortunately, a lot of the time. It's, you know, the creative process has to be put off to the side. Um, and then you have to dedicate a lot of that side time. So it, in the process of development, you probably are going to have some late nights, you know, and it's, but it pays off in the end. It's just straight up dedication. Know that you're going to be dealing with that stuff, but know in the end it's going to pay off. People are going to see it. People are going to love it. You put your heart into it. Nobody saw it yet. Nobody's judging it yet. You know what I mean? Just do it. They see it getting started, they will invest. Yeah. If you build it, they will come. Yeah. Certainly yeah. so. If it's an idea of, of great magnitude, everybody wants in on it. Yep. Right. Yeah, see, and I mean. Your student loans disappear, and you can get some more. No yeah. <laughs> student loans. Yeah. Yeah. You, it, it takes the foresight to say, to go from, I want to write a comic. To, I'm writing a comic. Yep. I'm, I'm doing it. Even, yep. even though you're not right at this moment in your head, you've got it. You're writing the comic. You get some time, you're writing, you're working, you're doing it. There's the next step. To understand that you are doing your, your comic. Yep. Well, yep. You are studying for that exam. You are not you want to. You are. Terrence, well, you are. You, it's in your head then you are writing this comic. For uh, anybody, anybody out there, goes along with him, you know, you just do it, just go for it. That's it. Nobody else is going to do it for you. I mean, like he said, it's in your head. Just put it to paper. You know, mm -hmm. just like, like this, this comic. I, I was looking at a, I work digitally mostly, so I was looking at a blank computer screen with, this, with these lyrics in front of me, I call it lyrics because basically that's what it is. Thank you. Um, and so I'm sitting there looking at this and I'm struggling. Like, how am I going to turn this into this? You know, like in the very first passage, you know, he's describing this, this family, like this little boy. He, he's dead, you know, wow. and he's in a pile of leaves and he's, he's about eight. And so it looks like nothing happened to him. He's, he's, it's almost like he just killed over and died, you know. But then he has a younger sister, and then he has the mother, and then he has the father. So this is about, you know, what's worse? You know, what's worse? So I had to put myself in a situation. And we actually sat down one time, and he's like, do you still want to do this project? Remember that? And I said, yes, I want to, because I had to sit down, and I had to struggle with it. And... Any project that makes you think that much, you want to invest in. That's it. You know? So I'm glad I did. I'm glad I stuck in there because this book rocks. And then there's some other stuff that he's actually starting to work on. And, but anyways, but my creative process was I had to deal with this 
you know, the scene, there was an eight-year-old boy in a pile of leaves, and his sister's right next to him. But the sister has her head smashed. And then her, br and then her mother, same thing. And the father, same deal. But the way that it happened, like, like you don't know how it happens. Like, their heads are just caved in. That, that's really what was described, right? Their heads were caved in like something blunt hit it. I mean, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. You know, like, do you want to say it? The opening lines is, Murdered child, horrifically strewn in a deep leaf pile. Mm -hmm. It's powerful in, in many ways. It's a culmination of what's worse. It didn't start off as murdered child. It started out as dead guy. But what's worse than dead guy? I went to dead woman. What's worse than dead woman? Dead child. And that is emulated in every passage in this book. Battle of what's worse. It's truly what's worse. Yeah. Yeah. This story is what's worse. Mm -hmm. There's nothing worse than battle of what's worse. Yeah. So we're running out of time, but I want to ask you this one thing. Uh, right, the point that Larry was making was be thankful for what you have because someone always has a worse. Uh, I, mean, I mean, you see news footage of people getting into these uh, ridicul ridiculously long lines camping overnight uh, for the latest uh, iPhone. Well, there are people, sometimes whole families, uh, with no place to go who can't even feed themselves. Do you think people in this country don't know how good they really have it? And if so, like, how do we wake them up? Well, um, uh, out, of, out of personal experience, um, I always found you know, I could always rely on people. And yeah, some people take it for granted. You know, some people really do take their blessings for granted and it's sad. And the only reason why I think so is because nobody ever had that wide range of, you know, yeah, there are, I don't know. I'm getting kind of choked up about it now, see? But um, here's, here's my, my, with that, somebody said this. I did not say this, but I heard it. The rich... You know, the poor stay poor by living like they're rich, and the rich stay rich by living like they're poor. <laughs> yeah, true. More, 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 basically. More, 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 my lord, more. And to get a piece of technology that everybody's just walking in front of buses with, they're getting killed. I got, almost got killed. A texter drove in front of my motorcycle, Shit. threw me 30 feet, mm. landed on my head. Half the reason I'm trying to get some of this stuff off my chest. Mm -hmm. You know, don't text and drive. Don't beat your wife. Don't smoke in bed. There's certain things you just can't do. Yeah. And if you got enough, give back to some of the people who don't. I'm not talking about the guy with the nice boots at an intersection saying he's homeless. Well, you know, making a meal and going and finding the down, downtrodden. They're not there at the intersection. They're, they're closer to the bridges. Yep. They're closer to the soup kitchens. Get back. Throw a box of food in, into the local food pantry. Yeah. You, know, you know, a young guy is just down on his luck. Hey, he looks strong. Hey, you need some help painting the garage? Give him some money to trust. We lost trust in each other. That's, that's what's going on. We've lost trust in each other. We bring back the trust in each other. Don't screw each other over. Join a co-op. Join a group of like-minded people. Like the LD Green Co-op? LD yeah. Green Co-op, absolutely. Um, but it's deeper than that, and it's, it, it's doable. It's doable. You buy two cans of beans, buy three, donate one. If you can't afford it, don't go taking food out of your, your family's mouth to do it. But if you've been blessed to have a little extra, 
you feel good. It feels good. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it is about giving back, and um, contributing to the whole. You know, if you if you actually give somebody something, a chance, an opportunity, uh, a step up, knowing that they have potential to do it, then your life is going to get so much more rich. And it will turn into financially rich. You know, it will turn, it, it's, it's, you know, it is, it, I mean, going out and wasting money, because that's what it is, it's a waste of money on iPhone, on like the iPhone 6 Plus. I mean, honestly, do you want that half an inch? You know what I mean? Or whatever. I mean, it's, it's not, I don't know, it, it's all material. If you drain money on materialism, you're just going to fail. At least that's me, you know. Yes, I need certain things. I use a Cintiq, uh, but that's for my art. You know, I have a computer for my art. You know, and there are little minor luxuries, but we're not exactly like, oh, I need that brand new, you know, uh, iPhone or that brand new iPad. or Shut up and take my money. Yeah, exactly. Shut up. The Avengers, though. Uh, but anyways... Uh, <laughs> Thank, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Uh, uh, thank, thank you, you for, for spending coming. your time with us. Uh, yes, and thank you, uh, audience, uh, for watching uh, from your living room, on your TV, or on your iPad. tablet, whatever uh, iPad. No. Well, you're Enjoy waiting in line it. at yeah. Apple. Enjoy it on your iPad and iPhone. Just, you know, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, that's all the time that we have for today. For, I would like to thank again Aldi Green and Zach Resendiz uh, for dropping by. The book is uh, Battle of What's Worse. Uh, go check it out on the Aldi Green co-op site. Uh, uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. And uh, we're